Roof Together, an online service, September 27th, 2020. To be alive right now. Welcome from Lois Pettinger. Hello and welcome to the online service of the Rogue Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, which we call ROOF. My name is Lois Pettinger and I'm a member of the worship team. You are my family and I am deeply grateful to be a part of this community. Together we will continue to valley, value every human being during this challenging time. During times we cannot safely meet together, these online services are our way of connecting and continuing to keep the mission of our congregation and association alive in our own lives and in the world. We're glad you're here and we ask you to join us in embracing diversity, empowering connection, and engaging in the work. Each week when we gather, we acknowledge that the land on which we live is the traditional home of the Cow Creek, Umpqua, Tekelma, Shasta, and Lagawa people. We remind ourselves that indigenous people are part of our communities and continue to experience the effects of colonization and conquest. We are committed to fighting for the worth and dignity of indigenous people in our community and around the world. We also commit ourselves to work for a world in which the lives, work, bodies, dreams, and leaderships, leadership of the black people are honored and respected. We remind ourselves each week that we must put our words and our principles into action every day for justice and the common good. Welcome and thank you again for being with us. You are alive. This moment is filled with magic. Make this life worth living every day. Rosangel Perez. Our chalice lighting words are adapted from Prayer for the Morning by Reverend Odette Fulbright Fulson. Did you rise this morning with weariness and pain and rage? tattered from waving too long in a brutal wind. Get up anyway, pull your bones upright, gather your skin and muscle into a patch of sun, for another day calls to you. I know you ache, I know you wish the work were done, and you, with everyone you have ever loved, were on a distant shore, safe and unafraid. But remember this, tired as you are, you are not alone. Here, and here, and here also, there are others weeping and rising and gathering their courage. You belong to them and they to you, and together we will break through and bend the arc of justice all the way down into our lives. Our opening song is There is a Love Holding Us, by Elizabeth Norton and Reverend Dr. Rebecca Ann Parker, performed by the Virtual Choir of the UU Church of the Palouse.
our peace candle words are by Rabbi Lauren Holtzblatt speaking at the memorial of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. To be born into a world that does not see you and despite this to be able to see that beyond the world you are in to imagine that something can be different that is the job of a prophet. Salam Shalom Peace Salam Shalom Peace Salam Shalom Peace Salam Shalom Our story is the strawberry, a traditional Zen tale told by Martha de Aquino. A Zen master had traveled to a distant village. On his return, he was running late for his train, so he took what he thought was a shortcut. He found himself walking along a steep path at sunset staring off into the distance. So taken was he with the beautiful views that he didn't pay attention to where he was walking. At that instant, he kicked a small stone and realized that he did not hear it land. He stopped only to discover that he stood at the edge of a huge cliff. One more step and he would have walked right off to a hundred foot drop below. As he stood there gazing out at the mountains, he was shaken by a loud roar. He turned to see a large tiger approaching him. He stepped to the side only to have the ground beneath his feet crumble. Falling off the edge of the cliff, heels over head, his hands waved to reach anything that might save him. An instant later, he found himself clinging with one hand to a thorny vine growing out of a crack in the rock. He looked up to the top of the cliff again, where he saw the tiger licking his lips. His eyes searched far below him to the bottom of the cliff. There, looking up at him, was another tiger, with one tiger above and one tiger below. He looked again at the vine, its sharp thorns poking his hand. Near the vine, he saw a tiny hole, a small black and white mouse crawled out of the hole. It scampered along the edge and stared at him for a moment. Then looked up at the tiger and began to gnaw the vine. The monk searched for anything else that he might grab, but there was nothing. Far off to the side was a small green plant. Surely it wasn't strong enough to hold his weight, but he reached for it anyways. It had green leaves 
and as he parted them, he saw something small and red. It was a wild strawberry plant. It had one perfectly red, ripe strawberry. He plucked it from the plant and ate it. And as he did so, he thought, how sweet life is. Please take a moment to center yourself in a spirit of meditation or prayer while you listen to the song Only Love by John Prine, performed by Will Emerson. people. This moment is calling us to theologically root in. Spiritually gather ourselves with nature and the earth as our God to hold in what is always constant and true. To me, what's always constant and true is love, the divine spark of beauty inside each one of us, and the beauty of connection to each other and to the world. So here we go. Be inspired by what is possible and what we create and what we can do and what we are already doing to make ourselves, our families, our communities better than we arrived. Be inspired to learn, 
transform, be changed, and to be able to say, you know what? I messed up, but I'm still here. Be inspired to disrupt. You hear me? Be inspired to disrupt, to play the inside game, to be the writer, the facilitator, and know that at all times you can be all of the above and that it is always necessary to play the inside and outside game. And at the same time, you can be the disruptor one place and be the insider another place and train yourselves to do both. Be inspired to use technology in all forms and all ways to live into the realities that we never dream possible. Be inspired to change our faith for the better, to be active participants in the radical realignment necessary, and to stay faithful even when it feels like no, there's no way forward and no hope. Be inspired and even more so be the inspiration, not just for the people in your immediate circle but to be the embodiment of what it leads to mean through you, you values, out loud for all to see. That is what it means to be a true evangelist for our faith and to be an inspiration for what is possible, and we need that more than ever. We need to be the embodiment of what is possible, the embodiment of happiness, the embodiment of liberation, the embodiment of justice, the embodiment of radical wellness, the embodiment of cultural shifts, the embodiment of what it means to live a grounded, theological, rooted, happy, loving life. What we need right now is people that are ready to embody what radical change looks like. Not just say the words, but to literally live them out loud. Our offering words are by Paolo Freire. True generosity lies in striving so that these hands, whether of individuals or entire peoples, need to be extended less and less in supplication so that more and more they become human hands which work and working, transform the world. You can give by mail, online, or by text. To mail a check, our address is 87 4th Street, Ashland, Oregon, 97520. To give online, go to tinyurl.com slash roof offering. There, you will be led through the giving process. Or, you can text the amount of your gift to 541-229-4229. So, if you'd like to give $100, you just text the number 100 to that phone number. If you need support during these difficult times, fire-related or not, Contact Reverend Sean by text, phone, or using the form on our website. We will do whatever we can to help. For these gifts, and for all the gifts you bring into this community and the world, thank you. Our sharing is to be alive right now by Reverend Sean. In the blockbuster Broadway show and cultural phenomenon, Hamilton, there's a line that always captured my attention. How lucky we are to be alive right now. It's part of two different numbers in the show. One when the war has not yet broken out and the Schuyler sisters are singing about how exciting it is to be in New York City in 1776. Later in the play, when Alexander is sent home by George Washington, who angrily dismisses Hamilton's personal ambition to be a great general, only to find that his wife Eliza is pregnant with their first child. And that is why Washington sent him home. Eliza sings, how lucky we are to be alive right now 
to soothe his disappointment and worry. Neither of the scenes occurs in times when I would feel lucky to be alive. One, just as the revolution is breaking out and the war's death toll and bloodshed is about to begin. And another, as that war is raging and the likelihood of the colony's success is looking grim. And yet they sing how lucky it is to be alive right now. I chose the title of this sermon long before the fires that have ravaged our communities. And I chose to modify it a bit for publication, calling the service to be alive right now and leaving off the how lucky we are. I didn't want to offend those who are feeling the full measure of grief and fear and sorrow that is appropriate for the losses we are suffering. And yet, the full title haunted me all this week. The reason I chose it, even in times of pandemic, social upheaval, corruption, and evidence of the collapse of the political and ecological systems we rely on, is still the same, even after the fires. Maybe, even with such suffering. It is lucky to be alive right now. The story that Martha told about the strawberry occurs in several forms in Buddhism, Jainism, and other traditions. Whether there are tigers above and below, or demons, whether it's mice or hedgehogs poised to chew through the last handhold, or whether it's a strawberry or a fig or a plum or a mystery fruit, the story is a koan, a teaching story given without explanation for the student to figure out. In the West, especially in contemporary Zen practices, the story is told in a way that extols mindfulness and enjoying the present moment, even if the past and future, tiger above, and tiger below are worrisome and dangerous. Sometimes the story ends with the words, how sweet it tasted. And the reader or listener is left to ponder if the strawberry was sweeter because of the danger and the likelihood it was the traveler's last. Or perhaps the strawberry sweetness is the same, no matter the circumstance and what is important is that the traveler took notice. In other traditions, the story is not so simple or so happy. In some, the strawberry is poisoned. In others, the traveler is seen as a fool, distracted from focusing on finding a way to survive by a moment of sweetness. Again, a story about attention, but with a different lesson, stay connected, stay committed to your survival and do not let anything, even the sweetest berry, distract you from finding a way out of your dire predicament. You may have a preference for one of those lessons or the other. You may feel uplifted or resistant when you encounter the idea that we are lucky to be alive right now. Or maybe you just don't know which lesson to receive. After all, survival is of utmost importance, but so is staying open to the sweetness that coexists with suffering. Maybe that strawberry gave our traveler the strength and hope to find another handhold, to scramble sideways a while until another path or shelter became clear, or one tiger or the other got bored and wandered away to look for a quicker way to fill its stomach. The truth is, we don't know. We can't know. We can be grateful for having escaped the tiger of the past. We can hope that the tiger of the future will be less of a threat or somehow will become a companion and guide. We can ignore the mice that are eating the thorny vine or befriend them. Perhaps they will startle the tigers or lead them on a wild mouse chase away from the cliff and we can find a way to safety. I'm hearing lots of people talk about the idea that we cannot go back to the old normal. It feels clear, especially after the fires, that we're not able to go back to how it used to be. 
That is true because the businesses, neighborhoods, the landscape we love has changed forever. And it's true because we can see in ways that were once invisible to us how dependent we are on each other, how careful and caring we need to be in our communities, and how much we must work to make sure that old systems and inequalities are not mindlessly replicated in the ways and communities we rebuild. There is grief in the knowledge that the tiger of the past was real, was dangerous, and was destructive that people were hurt and that in many ways the people who are most often and most terribly hurt in our world are again bearing the brunt of this tragedy. Noticing that grief is important, even vital as we begin to heal. There is also sweetness in the way that so many people have shown up to respond. So many are giving money, time, spaces, teddy bears, clothing, advocacy, communication, encouragement. These are the strawberries that were hidden on the cliff and are immeasurably sweet and nourishing. These are the moments that mean more than things that are full of kindness and love. How sweet this tastes, how grateful we are for this moment, for these friends, for a day without smoke the gifts we can give and those we are learning to receive. In the past few weeks, we have lost some amazing people. On the national stage, Representative John Lewis and Justi Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg were like superheroes, spending their whole lives in pursuit of justice and a better world. They were human and imperfect, but they did not give up, did not lose hope or stop fighting. And closer to home, we have lost Richard, Ronald, Lauren, and Dawn to the tiger that is death. Our community is mourning and is emptier without their presence. And in the UU community, we have lost three people in the past month. Ellen, who was the first person at the UUA I ever told I was transgender. David, who worked hard to grow and change and move towards fairness and justice. And just two days ago, my friend Elandria, former co-moderator of the Unitarian Universalist Association, a born and raised UU, who was an activist and leader as a youth, young adult and adult, and who died suddenly this week. In the reading, which comes from a sermon E recently gave at the UU Fellowship of Plattsburgh, Alandria reminds us that we must be passionate people. This moment is calling us to be people who hold on to what is always constant and true, love, beauty, and community, to be inspired by what we can do and are already doing, to be inspired to disrupt be inspired to change our faith for the better, be active participants in the radical realignment necessary, and to stay faithful even when it feels like there's no way forward and no hope. We must stay faithful, be ready to take our turn as leaders, heroes, and fighters for the world as we want it to be. There may be a tiger above and a tiger below. We may not know how we will get out of the predicament we're in, but we must not give up. We must not stop trying. We must look for handholds, for wild strawberries, for whatever will sustain us as we find a new way, a way of love and commitment to the good for all people. May it be so. May we be the ones that make it so. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Our closing song is We Shall Be Known by Ma Muse from the UU The Vote Project.
Our closing words are love adapted from the online theology website Infleshed. Love is risky. Love challenges systemic evil in all its forms. Love is simple but not easy. Love is collective. Love rises up. Love apologizes. Love believes. Love corrects. Love holds accountable. Love pays reparations. Love heals. Love tells its story. Love embraces everyone, every creature, every creation. It knows us intimately. It holds us collectively. Love transcends every boundary that seeks to confine it. It will not tolerate violence in its name. It does no harm. It only sets free. Join us on Zoom for Coffee Hour every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Details on how to join are sent by email. Sign up on our website.